Hello, I'm Lana, and today we're going to go over everything there is to know about Unity in this very short video. Actually, we're just going to go over the basics, but we're going to go over everything to get you up and running. After that, I highly encourage you to keep learning. There's so much to know in Unity, but it can seem like a lot at first. So today we're going to cover the essentials to get you going. We're going to look at installing Unity, a quick overview of the UI, importing a 3D object, and setting up a character controller. For the first step, install Unity. Go to unity.com, click on Get Started, click on Individual, Personal, Free, Get Started. And here we're going to go on First Time Users, start here. It's only free if you're making less than $100,000, but if you're just getting started to Unity, that's probably you. So click Agree and Download. Click on the downloaded file, which is the installer for Unity Hub. Click OK, or Yes, or Confirm, or whatever it was. Click Agree, install it here. I've actually already got it and it's running, so you just can just follow the rest of the setup. Now you're going to want to go through the Install Wizard. So select where you want to install it. Create yourself a Unity ID. So you're going to want a username, email, and password. You're going to want to agree to the terms. How does this username already exist? <laughs> okay, great. Let's go. Here is select an empty 3D project. We're going to start with an empty scene. There's plenty of tutorials on the Unity website. I highly recommend watching all of those. This is just to get you up and running if you feel a bit intimidated by all the material that they have on the site. Okay, here is Unity. If anything looks different, I think you might have your inspector set up over here, for example. You can just click the top and drag it over like you can in most programs. I like keeping these two together because you're an inspector and hierarchy. I now made a mess of everything. What's going on? There we go. I like keeping in the inspector and hierarchy together because they work together and it's nicer than having to go across the screen for them. Your hierarchy shows what's currently in your scene. So here you can see the title of my scene is sample scene. We have a camera and we have a light. And that's it. Now, over here you can see this changing when I click on the op game objects. It's showing you the details of that object. Each game object has different components attached to it. So this is a game object. It has a light attached to it, for example, for the light. This has a camera element attached to it, an audio listener. And there's a whole bunch of different components that can be attached to a game object. But we're going to just go into um, a few of the basics to start off. Here in your project tab is where all of your files are for the game on your computer. So you can even see where they are by right clicking, going show and explore. And here's where they are in on your computer. Right in front of us here is the scene. This is what is in the game. You'll get a preview of it here. And when you click on play, it will actually run the game. It will run the code. And this tab here, scene tab, will switch to the game tab, which is where you'll see things from the current camera that's in the scene. Right now, we can see it from the main camera. Let me give you an example. So you press play. It's now starting. And voila, we're in the game, which is just a light. So we'll pr probably want to add to that. Let's add a game object to the scene. So we can go up here to Game Object, 3D Object, Plane, and now we have a plane in the scene. So that was pretty easy, right? As you can see here, it's at the origin of the scene, position 000. It has no rotation applied to it. It has a 111 scale, meaning it hasn't been resized. But we're actually going to make it bigger. So let's go ahead and put 20, 20, 20. So now we have a big plane. If we want to look around the scene a little bit, we can hold down Alt and with the left mouse pointer, uh, drag it around your mouse and you can kind of get a better view of what's in the scene. Keep in mind this is just your preview. When we go into the game mode again, it's going to go back to whatever the camera sees. So yeah, Alt, middle mouse button to move around, middle mouse button to zoom in and out, and Alt, left click and move around to get a different angle. Now let's add a cube to the scene. Game object, 3D object, cube. By default we see this moving around. Um, you can get to that by pressing W. If you press E, we can now rotate the cube in different directions. This is along the axis, or if you don't click one of those lines, it's just freeform. And R is to resize it. So W to move it, E to rotate it, R to resize it. And if you ever want to enter particular values, you can just reset them here by going like this. And there's our cube again. The next thing we're going to do is import a 3D object into our game. So we're going to go ahead to Turbo Squid and we're going to download an FBX file. So if we just browse free 3D models and we go to format.fbx, uh, let's add a 
let's add a couch to the scene so we can click on this download it for free and make sure you download the .fbx file and you're probably going to want the textures.zip as well so here are the files we downloaded from turbo squid we have the .fbx we're going to take it and drag it over to our project folder over here do you see how it has the pointer with the plus we let go and it's going to import it here we're also going to bring over the texture folder so we click on that and drag it over there so now what we really need to do is drag this over here to our scene there it is that's simple but you can notice there's no textures on it it's also kind of hard to see this game object so we're going to go over to our light this is a directional light which means it will light up the whole scene um, it doesn't matter where you position it it's going to light it up the same the only thing that it matters is the rotation so we're going to rotate it so you can see the couch a bit better there we go now we're going to make a material for this couch right click on your project folder create material here we have we call it couch and we can drag this material onto the couch now and let's put this couch into the textures folder and we click on it and here in the inspector we can see some of the properties of the texture uh, let's apply the albedo first which we can find here then let's apply the normal which is here we can fix it we click on it we can see that this is the reflection this is the height and let's drag the height over now we have the texture on the couch so now that we have a 3d object in our world let's move these things away from the origin we can click on it e to rotate and if you hold down control it will snap now if we click on play it's not a very interesting scene it kind of looks like someone's watching tv in the desert you know maybe that's the game you want to make maybe that's maybe that's the game we're making is a game where you watch tv in the desert but there's not a lot of interaction going on and it'd be kind of fun to walk around in the scene so let's bring in a character controller we're going to bring it in from Unity's Asset Store. So click on Window, Asset Store, and this tab is added and it will load the Asset Store. So you need to be logged in and confirm your email to get to the Asset Store. But once you do, um, you can just click on the tab and we're going to search for Standard Assets. And here we have the Standard Assets Pack. It's free. You can click on it for more details. Um, then you can click on Import. Once that's done downloading, we can then click Import. And once you've imported the assets, it will show up over here in your project folder. We're going to look at the characters, first person, prefabs, first person controller. We're going to drag that into our scene over here. We go over to our scene tab and we have our first person controller here. They're currently going through the plane. So we're going to raise them up above the plane and we're going to take our camera, main camera, and we're going to disable it. The first person controller has a camera attached to it. So we're going to disable this camera that's here by default. Before we can play this scene, we actually have some errors we need to look into. The reason we're getting these errors is because the first person controller asset that we're using is a little bit out of date. I would definitely recommend either making your own or buying one from the asset store. But when you're first getting started, it's hard to know what is a good character controller and it's a pretty difficult thing to build. So let's use this one temporarily until we learn a bit more about Unity. So we need to have our text editor linked up to Unity. I'm using Visual Studio Code. There's a lot of different text editors and IEEs that you can use, but go ahead and get whichever one you like. Again, I'm using Visual Studio Code. And once you have that installed, you can go to Edit, References, External Tools, and you can choose from here which text editor you want to use. If it doesn't show up, you can click over here on Extensions, type in Unity. I am using Debugger for Unity. And unity tools and if you have these two things in it should probably automatically find them. these are good to have regardless once that's set up you can now double click on the issue and it will open that in the text editor and because we're not actually going to be using the scripts that are causing the issues we can just comment out the issues that are coming up so right here it's this camera press Control backslash to comment it out save it and then go to the next one once you've taken care of those errors we can now play the scene so now we can actually walk around the scene. We can import the assets, apply textures, import simple shapes, change the lighting direction, and walk around. Hopefully that was enough to get you started. So this is the first tutorial in this series. If you guys do want to see more, let me know by liking and subscribing. That will show that there's interest in this. You can also let me know what you'd like to see next by leaving a comment in the comments section on what you'd like to cover. I'm planning on showing lighting next and maybe some introduction to coding in C Sharp. I should also mention that I stream game development every day on Twitch. So if you have questions or you want to see what I'm up to, 
please come by, say hello. Uh, the link is in the description of this video. Thank you so much for watching.